dairy farming. What do you think of when you think of dairy farming? Maybe you think of the milk you had in your coffee this morning, or of the multi-billion dollar industry in New Zealand. Maybe you think of cows, or of the environmental impacts. No matter what you think of when you think of New Zealand dairy farming, I'm about to change your mind completely. Now let's talk about cows. Cows are a big deal in New Zealand. There's 4.8 million dairy cows in New Zealand, responsible for $13.4 billion worth of exports every year. Cows are a very big deal, and they're a big problem. And slime might just be the solution. But before we can understand the solution, we need to understand the problem. Environmentally, dairy farming has the nickname Dirty Dairy, and this is probably well-deserved. Intensive dairy farming results in excess nitrogen entering the groundwater. This causes the overgrowth of toxic algae. Sixty percent of the rivers in New Zealand are considered unswimmable, and the legacy of intensive dairy farming is partially to blame. Economically, dairy is expanding, but our pastures are a limited resource. In order to compensate for our ever-increasing herds, we import three million tons of feed every year. The majority of this is palm kernel extract. This feed is very high in saturated fats. So high, in fact, that when we feed it to cows, it makes the milk high in saturated fats. These fats have negative health effects on human health. These include increasing inflammation, causing high cholesterol, and increasing the risk of heart disease. In other words, they're unhealthy. Milk companies are aware of this trend, and they're imposing financial penalties for milk that has too many saturated fats in it. These come into effect in October. Dairy farmers are facing a very real dilemma, where the cows need more feed, but they can't just grow more grass, and they can't just keep importing feed. Dairy farming has reached its economic, its social, and its environmental limits. Cows are a big problem. And sometimes the solutions are found in the most interesting of places. Cows can produce 45 kilograms of excrement every day. A large portion of this is caught in the milking shed and washed into a big pit where it's sprayed back onto the pasture. In the past, effluent redistribution has seemed like a good idea. But in areas with well-draining soils, groundwater contamination is a ticking time bomb when it comes to ecosystem health and human health. Introducing the slimy solution to dirty dairy farming. Rather than haphazardly using this nutrient-rich resource as a sewage sprinkler, let's redesign effluent ponds into algal growth ponds. Here, nitrogen that grow beneficial algae. These beneficial algae can act as a wastewater treatment facility. They utilize nitrogen more efficiently and prevent it from entering the groundwater more reliably than effluent irrigation. The algae that accumulate in these ponds can also be used as cow feed and to produce biofuels. So, what would a nutrient recycling system like this even look like? Something like this. At the very start, effluent fo flows into a large sedimentation tank. Here, the largest particles filter to the bottom, where they can be removed and reapplied as fertilizer. The liquid portion that is left in the tank can then be diluted and move on to the second phase, the algal growth tanks. Here, algae can grow. They remove 95% of nitrogen from the wastewater and convert it into algal protein. Then, this algae-rich sludge can move on to the third phase. In this V-shaped tank, algae can sediment to the bottom and be collected for further processing. Processing into what? Well, your average algal cell looks something like this. If we take algae and we squish it, we end up with a fibrous cell wall, which isn't good for much, unless you happen to be a cow, in which case it's a great source of nutrition. This feed, this cell wall, can be ground into a powder and fed to cows in the form of a pellet. It has high levels of almost all vitamins and minerals, it has five times the protein of palm kernel extract, and it's palatable to cows. Even more than that, it's been shown to increase milk production by a staggering 20%, and there's an even more relevant benefit. Whereas palm kernel is high in saturated fats and causes milk financial penalties because it makes milk unhealthy, algae is high in unsaturated fats. 
these unsaturated fats, when fed to cows in the form of algae, end up in the milk. This has positive health benefits. These include increasing cognitive function, boosting mood, and lowering cholesterol. And what about the oils that we squeezed out of that fibrous shell? Well, these can be transformed into algal biofuels. These are a sustainable source of hydrocarbons that can be used to replace diesel in fossil fuel engines. When we look at the price of algal biofuels, they are used in... Right now, they're, they're too expensive to be economic overseas. But in New Zealand, they are, where oil prices are five times as much, it costs of producing algal biofuel are cost competitive. As continuing research and development occurs in algal biofuels, the costs will go down. Meanwhile, fossil fuels will continue to get more and more expensive. While electric cars might seem like a solution, they're really expensive. And this is a solution that can be used in modern engines now. So can a relevant amount of product even be produced? Well, on an average dairy farm with 420 cows, in the space of one hectare, 50 tons of feed and 150,000 liters of biodiesel can be produced off one hectare. This is the space within a 400-meter running track, just to put that into perspective. An average dairy farm has, has 215 hectares. This makes up less than one-half of 1% 1 of the total space of a dairy farm. So those are the benefits of the products, but what about the benefits of the system itself? Let's talk about cow gas. Methane is a greenhouse gas that's emitted from cows' digestive tracts. It's created by the microbes in their rumen. It gets a lot of attention in agricultural debates and climate change debates because it's responsible for 85% of emissions from the agricultural section. One spectacular benefit of converting effluent ponds into algal growth ponds is that these effluent is that effluent emissions can be captured. These emissions can be captured by covering uh, these ponds and converting, and the, the gas can be channeled into a generator. The generator can create electricity. This electricity not only reduces greenhouse emissions by 10%, but it can produce more than enough electricity to run the algal ponds to begin with. Now let's talk about the economics of the system. How much is it going to cost to implement? Well, it's going to cost, uh, according to a recent Queensland study, around $100,000 for a farm to install. A farm can pay that off in four years in saved feed costs alone. What challenges exist for this technology? One challenge is controlling what species of algae grow. There's many species that can be used to produce fuel and feed, primarily Cynidesmus and spirulina species. Controlling which species grow depends on controlling and monitoring specific water factors, like the concentration of carbon dioxide and the pH of the water. To control these parameters, we depend on these water wheels. By controlling how fast the water wheels turn, you control how much the water is agitated and how much air and carbon dioxide is mixed into the water. Although contamination is not entirely prevented by this, it can be reduced to a point where it's negligible. Another challenge that exists for the system is that it requires enough sunshine hours to grow. But there's adequate sunshine in 85% of New Zealand. Naturally, there's more sunshine in the summer months than in the winter months, so most algae can grow in the summer. This means that feed can either be stockpiled and fed out in the winter, or saved and, or more importantly, used in the summertime to feed during periods of drought. In northern Australia, algal feeds are already being introduced to help farmers cope with drought. It creates immense emotional strain for a farmer to be unable to feed their stock and have to sell them. So while this technology is designed to help animals, it's also good for people. In New Zealand, every year, summer temperatures are reaching a new high and rainfall is reaching a new low. Drought's becoming more and more of an issue. So the time has never been better for a feed that requires only 50% of the water of pasture to be implemented. 
This is the future of New Zealand dairy farming. So now I invite you to take a step back and look at the New Zealand dairy industry. It's more than just the milk in your coffee. There's environmental problems with runoff, with gas emissions, with water use. Unsustainable growth and importing massive amounts of feed present financial difficulties. Unhealthy milk and emotional strain on farming communities is incredibly, are incredibly important social struggles. If there is to be a future for New Zealand dairy farming, something needs to change. We need to innovate our way out of this before the proverbial hits the fan. By implementing and investing in new technologies, we can secure a future for farming that is sustainable and quite literally green. By changing effluent ponds into algal growth ponds, we can reduce the environmental footprint of dairy by reducing nitrate leaching, producing cheap and high quality feed that's better for our cows than imported feed. We can increase milk production, yield healthier milk, and produce biofuels all in an economically viable and environmentally sustainable way. Not bad for a little bit of slime. Wonderful. Um, I'm just slightly confused. How would this help your methane emissions? Right, so methane emissions are a massive concern for environmental reasons. So we want to reduce it as much as possible. A lot of methane emissions come from cow pats, for lack of better words. They come, they, it's called belching rather than farting. You understand that? <laughs> well, it comes from ruminants through their mouths, not through their asses. Partially. A lot of emissions do come from belching, but a significant portion are created by the biome in the back end of the cow. Okay. So up to 10% of emissions from dairy farms are from the effluent. So if we can capture the emissions coming from the effluent, we can still reduce greenhouse gases by a significant proportion. And to what extent is this being done in Australia? It's been done in um, several universities, and it's starting to roll out into public farms. It's still considered an experimental technology, but it's beginning why? to be why implemented is it now. So, why is it seen as experiment? Why isn't everybody going for it? I, I, I haven't heard any downsides from you. Well, the majority of algal research is being implemented at the moment because of increased oil prices, and the algal fuel is a byproduct of the increased oil prices. So because more and more interest is being shown as oil prices increase, it's only sort of just reached a breakthrough point where it's becoming financially viable. It's, it's not being used increasingly as an answer to uh, the climate impacts of fossil fuels? It's, that's a secondary benefit. Mostly it's financial, as a lot of things in science are. All right. Thank you.